All right, welcome everybody. I'm gonna show you how to turn this bathroom into uh, this bathroom. Uh, we're gonna go through all of it. We'll go through the demo process, where to start, how to start, how to break out that old tub. Uh, I'll show you my method to uh, getting your framing right. The shower system, this is kind of the most important stuff here, the shower system and the waterproofing basically. How do you waterproof it? Where do you start? What are the things you have to make sure you do? Uh, and then we're gonna go through the tiling. Um, where to tile, how to tile, where do you start, what kind of notch trowels you use and all that stuff. We're gonna tile our floor, it's kind of cool pattern. Um, grout, we're going to then caulk our corners, I'll show you how to do that. And the one thing that I'm gonna do in this video that's gonna be different than most of the people out here on YouTube world is I'm gonna talk about my pricing. I'm gonna tell you how much I charge for this tile work and kind of how I break it down. At least this way, you as a homeowner know how much you'd be saving it because you're DIYing it yourself or you as a contractor know if you're charging enough or not. So let's get into the video. All right, so here it is, this ugly old bathroom. First thing you do is we get into demo. You disconnect your fixtures, um, and then you break away the sheetrock that goes around the perimeter of the tub because there's a little flange that that sheetrock holds back. There's little, there, there's nails that run through. You pop the nails out, and you can break it. I use a sawzall to cut the corners. You want to make sure you can peek behind it to see if there's no wires or pipes or anything like that. Here we found an extra little secret room that we now have to deal with. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to utilize it, how to pivot from this, and what to do next here. The situation we're working with is a little bit different because there's absolutely no wall there to just modify. We have to build our brand new walls on our own. So I'm going to do a, a two by six first wall, which is gonna be like a little pony wall. And then there's gonna be a two by four wall behind it. Um, and I'm going with a two by six because I wanna have, you know, if I can, I will go as big as possible. So then it can be more user friendly. So we're gonna go with a uh, like a six inch transition piece at the top of it. It'll be like, see, it's gonna be this really cool seamless piece. I'll show you that in a little bit. But first we're just going to basically figure out our studs and we're going every 16 inches. So it's gonna be a stud here, stud here, and then every 16 inches. These are my little jacks. I'm going to screw everything together and then bring it in there and set it level with my laser. So we're going to do that next. All right, I'm sorry. You guys might be like, yo, this guy's got no energy. Why is he so monotone? The homeowners were right on the other side of the, the, the wall. So I couldn't be like, you guys want to see how to build a wall. Basically, I mean, we're just building a wall here. Uh, nothing really special. You pick however high you want it. I want it to be as high that like when I'm taking a shower, 90% of the time you're going to be taking a shower here. You want that shelf to be right at the correct height. You want to make sure that this sill is level this way, but then it's pitched into the shower. I didn't pre-cut my jacks like with a with a pitch on it. So what I did is loosen up the back screw and put a little shim under there. So then that pitched it for me. So then I had the right pitch that I needed, um, essentially to to be able to uh, you know get that water shedding. You could do that with your waterproofing, but it's a little more pain in the butt to do that that way than to do it this way. So bang, here we go. We got that done. Next, we're just basically filling in the, the framing now. There's a couple uh, framing that I have to fill in near the valve, uh, but then just doing my wall. I did my two outside studs, get those up and then do the middle. All right, so here we are. Now we're putting together our shower system. So here I'm using GoBoard. It's 100% waterproof board. This is not cement board, people. Um, cement board, you have to waterproof after. Never not waterproof your cement board. That's a mistake. Um, that's a it's a mistake, don't do that. So here, all we have to do is basically put our sealant into the corners and over our screws, and then that completes the entire shower system. That's why it's, or tub system, whatever. That's why uh, I like doing these so much, or the KBRS board as well. Basically here, you see me just putting the sealant on our screws and in the, in the seams, and that's it. You know what? Let me go over it and uh, show you exactly what I mean. All right, so we got our tub system over here finished up. At the bottom right here, I just add silicone um, to that corner. It looks sloppy, but once you tile it, you're not going to see that. Um, and then I'm going to wait to clean this up once it dries up. But that's what it looks like. 
All right, and additionally, because it seems like we're building a bunker here or something, I'm going to waterproof all the seams as well, just to make sure that they're uh, 100% or 200% done. All right, so here's basically what I am left with to ready to tile. I don't like to overlap my wall boards, whatever, over the flange, just because it pushes that out. So for me, it's easier to add that adhesive down there and then waterproof it like this. Um, if you do a good job with the adhesive back, you know, down there, like you might not even have to do this. Um, I did it on top of it here just because this niche is going to, well, the shelf is going to get so much water on it all the time, constantly. You know what I'm saying? This is basically like the shower floor. So I don't like, not shower floor, like tub floor because it's going to be right there and splashing. This is going to get really, really wet all the time. So I wanted to like double, triple check it to make sure that this is all legit. Um, thanks. So now we're just going to do the drywall in here and then start tiling this next. All right, so next is tiling, and I hope you guys don't mind me doing this style of video. It's just, I've watched hundreds of hours of YouTube videos, and it's always either part one, part two, part three, part five, whatever, or it's a boring time lapse with some old guy narrating it. No offense. just like, this is a lecture. So I'm trying to make it a little bit more fun. I'm trying to uh, basically get the whole project in in one video, but then at the same time explain it, and have a little bit of fun with you guys. So if you guys do enjoy this style of video um, and more videos that I'm gonna be coming out are gonna be exactly kinda like this, let me know what I could do better in the comments because I do want to get better. I wanna get really, really good at this. Uh, subscribe, let me know what I could do better and let's get into tiling. All right, and we're back. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my sill because if I do the sill and then set the tile on top of it, anytime the water hits the, the, the tile, it comes right down and onto the sill and out. So there's really not a lot of stress on that grout line that, where a lot of times showers would fail. Same thing if I do my sill and then I know exactly how high I need to bring up my tile. That's why I do the sill first, basically. Uh, also, my, my sidewalls kind of go around and cover those edges really, really nice. Um, I usually always do my middle wall first and then work off of it. This way I can get my grout lines to continue really nicely through. Um, it's just, I guess, the way I do it. The, uh, let's go over the, the trowel that I'm using here. So this is a 3 8 inch trowel. It's not quite half inch where it's like a lot of thin set and it's not a, a quarter inch trowel where it's too little, where you don't, you don't really have that kind of bed to manipulate the tile to kind of push a corner and anything like that. 3 8 inch gave me like ability to do that. Uh, the tile here is actually really, really nice where the, the sides are beveled, like really nicely smooth. So like even if you have some lippage on this tile, it's super, super forgiving. And I didn't have any issues with lippage because basically the whole install looks like lippage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so when I'm trying to figure out my pattern as well is uh, I'm always going to spend probably around 45 minutes to just grab a piece of tile before I do any thin set or anything, and then put it on the wall and trace it out. See how it looks like. You have to envision this uh, kind of installed already before you start putting in tile in. There's never like, oh, you start here, you start there. You just have to put it on there and see what it looks like best. And uh, that's how you do it. Tiling on the corners here as well is I use my Schluter strip. I'm not a huge fan of pencil edges or uh, Bull nose, especially. I never like bull nose. I think the Schluter strip just like that just looks so clean and modern. And then once this was painted and just looked amazing. I mean, you can see that at the end of like what that looks like. Um, I'm always a, uh, I'm a Schluter strip guy. I guess you could call me, but, um, dang, look at that. Done. Less than two minutes to tile this whole shower. I mean, this took me two days. All right. So we got our shower tiled out. So now before we can. 100% finish it up these little edges. I want to do my floor tile first so that I have a little more flexibility to run my tile here and then my wall tile will come over the top and create that really really nice grout line over there. Uh, so now we're going to focus on the floor and I'll do a quick time lapse on how to do that as well. All right, so the floor is pretty simple here. Um, again, it's a six by six tile. I'm not using any tile leveling clips because it's unnecessary. Not every tile I get tile leveling clips. I started the tub. It's because anytime like I, I think about tiling a room, I'm like, all right, what is the most important visual part of this room? And to me, it's that 
tub, right? We just spent all of this time tiling this beautiful shower, you know, inc like enclosure in there. I want to make sure that the tile right in front of the, the tub itself looks nice. So we had a little bit of a curve there to the tub. So I wanted to make sure that I got that nice. Um, the worst thing would happen is like you had a little sliver at the end and you know, you want to make sure that as you walk into the room, bang, you know, like you, like you see your work right out, right, right out the way. Um, and I know a lot of people focus kind of on the door and I don't agree with that. Cause I feel like if you're walking into a room, you always keep your head up, right? You're not staring at your feet. Uh, so that's why I didn't do it that way. Uh, what do you guys think about this pattern? Definitely comment down below. Let me know what the pattern looks like. If you guys like the arabesque pattern or not, I think it's kind of cool. I don't do a lot of them, but so now that I did my floor, I can then continue the sides on into it. And then you have a really, really nice clean grout line there. Bang, we're tiled. All right, so the last part we have to do here is grout this bad boy. So here's my grouting process and what makes, I have a couple of tricks that I use here. First is to use a damp sponge. So you see, I'll take a sponge and I'll squeeze it all the way out so there's no water coming out of it. So it's just damp sponge. And I'll just wipe it, the, the section that I'm using, just nice and easy. This way when I'm using my grout, it skates on that tile much easier across the actual tile itself and gets stuck inside the ground lines. So if you see it, you see how it skates right across that ground, across that tile, I mean, just like so. So I'll just kind of work it with the wet sponge, damp sponge, and then go this way. See, and it skates right across and it'll give you a lot less hazing. Damn, I'm like watching myself. I'm like, dude, pick up the energy. Let's go. Like, but again, we were kind of like constraints with the homeowners being right there. But look, we have a YouTube studio bathroom that I've built that uh, like in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start actually building mock bathrooms and doing a real in-depth tutorials on how to do all this stuff. Uh, here we're grouting. Nothing really special about grouting, right? You're just working into those grout joints, uh, making sure you... you uh, work the grout into them. Uh, then I'm going to wipe it down two times with a sponge and then you bring in a towel. That gets rid of basically all the hazing. Super, super important. Dry towel, must use. And then last but not least, in the corners, I am going to uh, put some um, silicone-based caulking, basically, uh, that matches the grout color and it will look beautiful. All right, so we have come to the end of our video here, and the last thing I wanted to touch on was the pricing aspect of this job. So what I'm about to talk about was literally for just the things you saw in this video, which is demo, prep, any carpentry that had to be done, and then the tiling itself. It doesn't have to do with the vanity, like nothing else except the stuff in this video, because I wanted to kind of, you know, compare apples to apples with things that you guys might be doing outside of this. Before I dive into those numbers, make sure that you hit subscribe. You guys see that I'm passionate about this. You see that I'm trying. You see that I'm like, I wanna get better at this and I wanna get better at helping people get better. So let's go. So uh, when we do our pricing, we break it down into two parts. Part one is uh, demo, removing all the debris, then the, the framing, all the framing we had to do the shower system itself and um, any all leveling that we had to do. So for that alone that you saw, basically part one of this like little video was $2,500 that we charged. Then the next like kind of field in our uh, quote here is the tiling. So we had 56 square feet of floor space that we had to tile. And then also we had a six foot niche massive niche, and we had 80 square feet of walls that we had to tile. And for that, we charged $4,366, kind of based on our square foot price. So all in, we were about 6,900 bucks, $7,000 we charged for what you saw in this video. Is it expensive? Kind of expensive in our area. We are definitely top like 20, top 10% of people um, that doing the, this work, but then I've also heard people who suck charging more than me um, for this, but we are able to charge that because we're booked 
five, seven months out right now, I think we're booked. So like we have the ability to kind of warrant those prices. I don't know if you probably live in LA, this is cheap. If you live somewhere else, it's probably expensive. So I live in New Hampshire, middle class kind of community. Uh, the people we work for are kind of more affluent because they kind of live around the lake where the houses are a little bit like, like more expensive. So keep that in mind when you're trying to basically work out those prices. All right. Um, I hope that this helped comment down below of what I could do better. I do want to learn from this. I want to get better at this. And I really hope that, um, uh, this helps you guys. All right. Peace out.